I am particularly honored because I think I'm the only mathematician here. Uh, presumably, Christodoulou was also supposed to be here, but he didn't come. Uh, so really, I'm really honored. Uh, Thibault was very important to me, uh, even though we, we did not collaborate on any, any paper. Uh, I always enjoyed coming, whenever I would come to uh, the Institute, I had very interesting discussions with him. He is one of the few physicists who is actually uh, showed a real interest in what I had to say about problems in mathematical general relativity. So thank you very much. I mean, this was, it's, it's a very, it, it's really a pleasure to honor you here. Uh, so uh, let me, I mean, remind everybody that uh, we're talking about general uh, relativity, the Einstein equations. I'll take the simplest case, which is the Einstein vacuum, reach equal to zero, uh, initial data sets with constraints, then the concept of uh, maximum future global hyperbolic development, which was very much developed here in France, in particular by Yvonne choquet uh, and Geroch. So this is, of course, a picture. And of course, uh, the most important thing in connection with my talk is that uh, uh, these equations uh, admit a large family of stationary solutions. This is a famous care family depending on two parameters. I will talk only about the case which equal to zero. There are also very interesting results in a cosmological constant case, uh, results uh, again at, at the mathematical level uh, by Friedrich and, and uh, also Hintz and Vasi more recently. Uh, a few words about mathematical general relativity since I'm again the only mathematician here. Uh, I should say something about what exactly uh, we want. Uh, so first of all, uh, a big theme in mathematical general relativity is to elucidate the mathematical structure of the classical general relativity, but not at random. You really want to connect it to interesting equations, which are central problems in, uh, in general relativity, which are both physically relevant, but they also satisfy our mathematical sensibilities, which is very important for mathematical relativity, which is beauty, rigor, and novel mathematical challenges, which is often something that maybe a physicist doesn't really care about. Uh, and of course, establish connections to other problems uh, in PD and geometry and other parts of mathematical physics. Uh, in, in the spirit of this mathematical entanglement that uh, I like to call, which means that uh, mathematical concepts, so this is Wigner, said by Wigner, mathematical concepts introduced for solving specific problems have unexpected, mysterious consequences in seemingly, uh, seemingly uh, unrelated areas. So somehow a problem that we are interested, sorry, uh, problems that we are interested in uh, are chosen also because of this uh, uh, this possibility of uh, interesting mathematical mathematical theories and interesting mathematical ideas have significance in other areas. Uh, so I will talk about the stability of care. So the conjecture, I guess, is known by everybody here. Uh, you start with uh, you start with uh, so this is uh, a picture of care uh, and. Uh, you start, so this is a black hole and this, this is a domain of hotter communication. You start with an initial data set of, of care. You make a small perturbation of uh, the specific initial data set and um, well, you look dynamically what happens uh, for large time. And uh, the conjecture is that you are going to converge to another care solution. Not necessarily the same, but another one. Uh, and uh, the result that I, I want to talk about it is that uh, and, and this is uh, work in collaboration with uh, Jeremy Seftel here in France, uh, is that the conjecture is true for sufficiently small angular momentum. And I, I'll, make, I'll, I'll clarify what I mean by, by this statement uh, in uh, the fact that uh, it's not completely... Yeah, so uh, first, first of all, let me, sorry, before saying anything else, let me mention some of the results uh, in this context of the Einstein vacuum equation, asymptotically flat solutions also, it's important to, to, to note. Uh, the only results on stability uh, at a non-linear level, so I'm talking about rigorous mathematical results on, on stability at a, at a non-linear level, is the stability of Minkowski uh, in, 
which was in 1990, 1993. So this is my work with Christo Dulu. Uh, and uh, then it took quite a long time to get to Stabilitio Schwarzschild. And uh, uh, so this is, again, work with uh, Jeremy Seftel. Uh, so this was between 2018 and 2020. Again, we had different papers on this. Uh, it's under the assumption that you, you have to make an assumption because if you start with uh, a typical perturbation of Schwarzschild, you may not go back to Schwarzschild. You may actually converge to a Kerr solution, to a small a, a Kerr solution. And there are lots of technical difficulties in, in the case of Kerr, which we wanted to avoid. So we look at the simpler case of stability of Schwarzschild, in which case we had to make initial conditions, uh, which what we call polarized, which ensure that the final state is also going to be a Schwarzschild solution. Okay? So that's, uh, that's what we did there. And, uh, and then there is a, a recent, recent work uh, by four people, which, that, so that's the Fermos, Holzegel, Rodiansky, and uh, Taylor, uh, who prove uh, uh, the same result in a more general setting, uh, where you look at the co-dimensions free of initial conditions, which are not initially, uh, you cannot initially specify, but you, you show that there exists a, a co-dimension three for which you have stability. So, uh, uh, in, in connection with the most recent work, uh, we have uh, a series of, of, of papers already. So, uh, so this is uh, 2019 with, uh, with Jeremy Seftel. So this is something which is very, very important in the construction that I'm going to talk about it, is the construction of GCM spheres in perturbation of care. This is one of the essential po points in the, in the, sta in the stability uh, of care result. So these are two, two such things. I'll maybe say more about them later. Uh, and uh, there is uh, another paper which I will mention uh, in which we, we, uh, we, we introduce a general formalism for the stability of care. Uh, and uh, finally, this result, uh, which is uh, uh, the most recent one, it, 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 it still has a piece missing, in fact. So, so this is uh, most, most of the steps necessary are in this paper, but there is still one which is missing, which is working in collaboration with uh, Seftel, uh, myself, and uh, Elena Georgi. Okay, so but maybe I'll mention uh, a little bit later what that is, but we, we definitely believe that uh, it's work in progress and we definitely believe it's true. So yes, the care stability, so the, the care family of solution is stable at least for small a. Now, uh, it's probably true also for the whole extremal case, but uh, there is only one place, in fact, in the analysis that we have which really requ requires small a. Most of the arguments really are not dependent on the smallness of a. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me talk a little very fast about the general stability problem. So uh, we look at, uh, in general, you, you have a nonlinear problem, uh, nonlinear PDE, typically. Uh, you have a stationary solution, uh, which is this one, and you make a perturbation, so you look at solutions of this type. There are three types of stability that, that uh, usually you work with. There is uh, orbital stability, in which case you show that psi, psi stays bounded, uh, Right? So uh, you make a perturbation and for all time psi stays bounded, so in other words, you stay close to phi zero. This is very rare. It's, it's for very, very simple equations that you can ever prove such a thing without proving much more, which is uh, based on asymptotic stability. So you, you, here you show more, you show that uh, not only psi stays bounded, but actually goes to zero. So this is one of the, it's a case which we call asymptotic stability. But the more interesting uh, type of result, which is what happens actually in the care stability, uh, uh, in, in the stability of care, is orbital asymptotic stability, which means that, uh, that uh, uh, this perturbation converges to something different, to another stationary solution. So you start with this, you make a perturbation, you converge to something else. And that's exactly the situation uh, in the care stability problem. Uh, you can see that by looking at linearized equation. That's, of course, what people, uh, people always do at the beginning. You linearize the equations around the stationary solution. So these are, let's say, think of the Einstein equations here. So n is the Einstein equation. Uh, you take uh, the linearization. You get a complicated system. And um, then, uh, because of the symmetries of phi zero, these equations have certain symmetries. 
which allows you to look at uh, mode stability, to discuss mode stability. So you, you look at decompositions into modes and you show that every mode is stable. In other words, for example, you show that there are no exponentially growing modes. So this is sort of typically what uh, physicists have done from the beginning. Uh, but of course, uh, mode stability uh, doesn't even give you boundedness of the solution at the linear level. And uh, I, I want to mention, to go to the nonlinear, to go from linear to nonlinear, you almost always need decay, right? So it's not enough even to have boundaries. You actually have to have uh, a quantitative decay, a way of measuring how the psi decays, which is of course consistent with asymptotic stability here, or, or uh, orbital asymptotic stability, which is a little bit more complicated. So you, you need quantitative decay. Uh, so uh, the problem uh, is that typically there are zero modes. In other words, there are modes which are simply bounded, so they don't decay. Uh, so uh, if you look, for example, at the linearized uh, Einstein vacuum equations, there is a huge family of zero modes, which have to do with the symmetries. Uh, well, first of all, the presence of a two-parameter family of solution, right? So you have A and M, so you, you, you can differentiate at every, in other words, you, you can take a variation uh, corresponding to the family itself, and that gives you a bounded solution. Uh, or general covariance, uh, for every solution of your equations, you can make a, a, a diffeomorphism. You make a one-parameter family diffeomorphism, you take the derivative, you get another bound. You get a huge family of bounded solutions, right? So, so this, this is a situation where you have huge kernels. So uh, you don't typically have, I mean, you don't have quantitative decay for all modes. You, you have to have boundaries and you have to obviously separate the two, okay? So the, the hope is, of course, that, that all these zero modes correspond to the fact that you don't converge to the uh, original phi zero, but you converge to something else. Of course, this, this involves only two parameters here, but there is something else which is of fundamental importance when you do, uh, when you do the issue of stability, which has to do with decay. Decay is a gauge covariant fact. Right? So you prove decay relative to something in a, a given coordinate system. So you uh, automatically, if you have to prove something like this, you also have to find the right gauge. So it's not just finding the final parameters. You also have to find the, the, the correct gauge conditions relative to which convergence takes place. Okay? So that's sort of the maybe, I would say in just a few words, it's maybe, maybe the main difficulty of the problem. Uh, so, uh, relative to formal mode analysis, uh, I go very fast over the history. So, uh, there is a, a, a metric perturbation analysis, which uh, was done by Reggie Wheeler even in the late 50s. Uh, this is done at the level of the metric. So, in other words, you do perturbation at the level of the metric. There is uh, this Disha uh, Bashar and Zerili. And then uh, uh, in the Newman Penrose formalism, when you actually look at, at, uh, at curvature, uh, there is uh, the work of uh, Teukolsky and Press Teukolsky, Baden Press, uh, and uh, which are uh, related to this issue of show showing that there are no exponential growing modes. You can have bounded modes, but there, there are no exponential growing modes. Uh, and uh, there is also something very important, which plays a very important role in this story that I'm talking about. There is a transformation discovered by Chandra Sekar that connects these two. Uh, uh, these two theories, and it was also uh, continued by Wald. Uh, it shows you that uh, somehow the main equations that you derive here, or the main equations that you derive here, you can rederive. You, you you can rederive equations which look like this one, starting with this one, or vice versa. Okay. So in particular, what's important for us is that you can start with these equations, and you derive equations which look like regular. It just so happens that the regular equations. Are, are better uh, in terms of analysis. If you want to, 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 to get quantitative decay, as I mentioned, it's better to work with, uh, in, at least in, in certain aspects, it's better to work with uh, uh, Reggie Wheeler. Uh, on the other hand, the formalism is much better at the level of Newman Penrose. So you are stuck somehow with this. The equation, which I'm going to talk about, which is a Teukolsky equation, is not that good from the point of view of the analysis. And you have to go to this one. Uh, and this will sort of put the two, the, putting these two things together allows you to really take advantage of both theories. Uh, so uh, the full mode stability was done by Whiting. So again, this is at the level of mode. So this is more or less what was done in the golden era of, of uh, black hole physics. Uh, 
obviously the story, I mean, lots of interesting ideas, but the story is far from being complete, right? So what was missing is obviously issues of uh, boundaries and decay, right? Just modes, <laughs> boundaries of modes is not enough to even prove boundaries of, uh, of solutions, of all solutions of the linearized equation. So here there, there have been a lot of very uh, uh, powerful message, which was developed by this time by mathematicians. So this, this is where math mathematical general relativity comes into play. There is, a, there is a message which has to do with Minkowski space, uh, which go back to Moravec, myself, the so-called vector field method, uh, and stability of Minkowski, which was this uh, work of Christo Dulle and myself. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so this was sort of a, a big story, which uh, was kind of finished uh, in the early 2000, uh, after stability of Minkowski space. So the, the new things were to study wave equations, so very simple wave equations on black holes, and actually prove again, prove, uh, prove uh, decay, boundaries and decay. So this is work of many, many people. So I mentioned here, sulfur so, so is starting with sulfur and blue, so, so, <coughs> sulfur blue, and, I mean, blue sulfur, sorry. The Fermos Rodnianski played an important role. Uh, many new ideas, uh, which played an important role in the analysis. Uh, this, this work here, uh, for, so this is in the case of Schwarzschild. For care, which the situation is, is much more complicated, there are uh, very important work of Dafermos Rodnianski, Tataru Tohonanu, and uh, Anderson Blue. So in particular, Anderson Blue is something that uh, I will mention because it plays an important role in, in my work with Jeremy and uh, Elena. Uh, scalar uh, wave equation uh, all the way to the extremal case. So this is work of the Fermos uh, Rodiansky and Schlappert and Rotman. It's very important, uh, but it's it's very much based on on more decomposition. It's not just the vector field method. It also uses uh, very strongly. In fact, this one, these two here, also use uh, the the modes together with vector field methods. It's only this one that does not use uh, more decomposition, and that's uh, the one that is relevant to our work. Uh, linear stability uh, uh, of, of this equation, in, in the case of Schwarzschild, this was a very important work of the Fermos, Holzegel, and Rodniatsky. Uh, and then, uh, in particular, uh, uh, these works have to do with part of linear stability. So again, it's linear stability in the newman penrose picture. Uh, it's uh, works of Mada, Fermos, Holzeg, and Rodniansky. So this is a linear Tewkowski equation, which is an, uh, maybe the most important wave equation part in what you have to do to prove stability in, in the linear case. And uh, then there are some other uh, more recent works on linear stability of care for small a due to uh, Anderson, Bagdal, Blue, and Ma, Hintz and Vasi. So, of course, uh, none of these results necessarily generalize to the nonlinear stability. So to go from linear stability to nonlinear stability, it's a huge stretch, right? I mean, but all these ideas are important. In fact, everything developed in, in this slide is very important in our own work. Uh, so for nonlinear stability, as I said, you need gauge condition, which have to be dynamically defined. You cannot define them at the beginning. You cannot impose, this is what people always do, but it doesn't work. You cannot impose gauge conditions at the beginning and, and hope that they are the ones that, that will work in the end. Uh, so you constantly have to redefine your gauge condition uh, dynamically. Uh, you need, uh, of course, a mechanism of defining the, track, the final state. So the same thing, these parameters AF and MF, you cannot define them at the beginning. You, you actually have to, to work hard to get them. Uh, y the issue of the gauge, uh, you need decay. And of course, you cannot only expect to have decay relative to a specific gauge condition, in as well as a specific coordinate system, if you want. Uh, here are some examples of some very simple equations, like uh, sort of just a scalar wave equation with a nonlinear term on the right hand side. Uh, in general, quadratic nonlinearity here in, in three plus one dimensions will not, are not stable. So, in other words, the solution size equal to zero is not stable. Uh, however, uh, and of course, the vector field method plays a very important role in this analysis. And however, if the null condition is verified, so there is a structural condition on the nonlinearity, which turns out to be very important in stability of Minkowski and also in stability of these care black holes in the nonlinear stability. If that condition is verified, then you do have stability of the zero solution. So that, that's, that was an, an important step understood in the 80s and yeah, essentially 1980s. 
so there is this null condition, which you hear all the time in mathematical relativity, plays a very important role in many, many things. Uh, so uh, this, this uh, yeah, I mean, again, th this is the sort of thing that I mentioned when I talk about mathematical relativity, that you work on a problem, you find something interesting, but it turns out that the same thing, and by the way, the vector field must are the same, the same things are important in many, many other problems. All right, so, uh, uh, and of course, uh, you also need, you need what is maybe the hardest thing of all, a strategy to disentangle the nonlinear interdependence of all these things, right? So there are many, many things that come together, and linear theory, it's, it, they are disconnected, but in nonlinear theory, they, they all are inter, intertangled. Uh, okay, so stability of Minkowski space I mentioned. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the framework because this is the, the kind of thing that uh, it's different. The framework that we use is slightly different from what is used by physicists, which is a Newman Penrose formalism or, or variation of the Newman Penrose formalism. So I, I want to say a few words about it. So, uh, like in Newman Penrose, you start with an null pair, which is this 3 4, uh, normalized. Uh, you, you look at horizontal structures. So, th this is the important thing th that we do, instead of, of choosing specific frames which are perpendicular to E3, 4, which are the spin frames and so on and so forth, which is done in, in, in uh, Newman Penrose or variation of Newman Penrose, we take instead, we, we take this uh, horizontal structure seriously. So we keep it geometrically, it's just a horizontal structure. We don't need any particular choice of uh, EA2. So, for example, now I can define uh, null second fundamental forms of the horizontal structure uh, in the usual way. You take, a, well, there should be a B here. So you take DA, DA E4, EB, where EA, EB are any frame on H. So I don't need to take a specific frame. Uh, so this defines kappa, kappa bar. And now uh, the important thing is that if this horizontal structure is not integral, but which is a case of care, so in care, it's very important, this natural horizontal structure is not integral, then uh, these things are not symmetric. And instead of having just the trace of uh, the second fundamental form, which are usually called expansions in, in relativity, uh, you, will get a, uh, you, you get what I call the asymmetric trace, okay? which corresponds to the asymmetric part of chi, the same thing for chi bar AB. And these are the only new components. All the other components, in fact, uh, of that uh, are written here are very much defined exactly in the same way as in stability of Minkowski space. But again, it's relative to this horizontal structure. In that case, the horizontal structure is integral, and here it's not, right? That's the only difference. So, so somehow the equations become more complicated because of the presence of these two. Uh, integrability uh, is nothing else but the fact that these two are zero. And uh, now uh, I can also, of course, define curvature components. So this is very similar to what's done in, in Newman Penrose, except again that these are two forms. They are not scalar. I never get scalars. And in fact, it's terrible to work with scalars in nonlinear stability because you have to do a lot of differentiations and uh, you get a mess with the frame. The frame is not particularly very good when you have to make certain choice. So, so the, the point of this is that I don't have to make any choice of, uh, of, uh, of horizontal frames, right? And therefore, I, I define uh, this as a two form, this is a two form. So this is the usual psi, I guess one is psi zero, one is psi five, maybe in, in standard Newman Penrose. But now there are, uh, there are uh, vectors, uh, there are, sorry, there are actually tensors, right? Two tensors, they are symmetric because of the, the symmetries of R. Uh, it turns out that you, you, you need to complexify to get the equations to be simpler. Complexification is now very important. Of course, complexification also plays an important role in Newman Penrose. Uh, so uh, you, you define uh, complexified quantities, and then you get the usual uh, Carter, uh, Cartan Bianchi equations, which are uh, like this, but of course you have lots of them and so on and so forth. So the, the uh, comparison that I made is with, uh, with my work with Christodoulou, where we use the thing, but, uh, but again, uh, in our case, the horizontal structure was, was integral, eh? and here it's not. Uh, and of course, Newman Penrose, the, the, that's a usual formula that until now I think everybody was using or variations of the new one. Uh, the care family, of course, <laughs> I recall very fast, right? So this is uh, in Borlinguist coordinates. Uh, you have the, the T, 
uh, the R continent theta and phi, you, uh, you have um, the, uh, these terms here, uh, which are expressed in terms of uh, TR and theta. Uh, and here is a picture. Uh, care is, of course, uh, stationary in the axis symmetric. In other words, it has dt as a kinetic vector field, and uh, z is d phi as a kinetic vector field. And uh, again, I mean, this is a story that we want to understand: what is the stability of the external part of the care family of the care solution? So now, uh, the important thing about care is that uh, you have a principal null frame, right? What uh, it known a principal null frame, which has uh, expressed relative to Borel-Linkus coordinates, looks like this. And the crucial fact is that uh, uh, this quantity is A, A bar, so these are the, the curvature quantity, complexified curvature quantities. They are all zero, with the except, exception of the middle one, which is equal to minus 2m over q cubed. So q is, uh, q is exactly the r plus i, a cosine theta. Right? But I, I, I guess I had it before. Yeah, this, this is where it is. OK, so, uh, so uh, in addition, you have that a lot of components of Ricci coefficients are also zero. In Schwarzschild, and th this is important, of course, th th this, uh, this pair is actually integrable. So in other words, the horizontal structure is integrable in this case. Also, the imaginary parts of uh, uh, this A trace chi, A trace chi bar, of course, zero. And uh, the, also, the imaginary part of P is also zero. And finally, in Minkowski, you have this, uh, all the curvature uh, components are zero. And you can see why uh, stability of Minkowski was the easiest, though it was very hard. Stability of Schwarzschild was much harder, and stability of care is even harder. Uh, so I, I want to give you a sense of perturbations, uh, because pre this plays a, an important role. Um, yeah, you see, you obviously you want to pick up a particular frame. So let's say you think we take an horizontal. Let's assume that we have an horizontal frame on care, which is such that uh, that uh, it's close to the one of the re uh, of the real care. So how do you measure this? You take the gamma and the r of of your uh, of your uh, perturbed solutions and subtract from it. Of course, you have to know what that means. How to subtract? You subtract the care values. For that, of course, you have to have these functions r and theta defined so that you can compare. But anyway, this is something that, in principle, you can do. And uh, obviously, you want an epsilon perturbation. So let's assume that this is all epsilon. Now the problem was. With uh, this, of course, as it's very easy to see, is that uh, uh, this very much depends on which frame you take. So, for example, if I give you a frame e1, e2, e3, e4, e3, e4 being the null pair, uh, I can perform a transformation to a new pair. I can make an exact transformation, in fact, it's not too difficult, uh, which looks roughly like this with f, f bar, and lambda being like this. So this, they are all of epsilon. This is uh, lambda minus 1 is all of epsilon. Uh, uh, you calculate this, and then you look at what happens with uh, the new curvature components in the new frame. And you see they are also all of epsilon, so you haven't made any improvement. With the exception, and this is remarkable, with the exception of the A and A bar, the extreme curvature components, which are all of epsilon going by. And so this is essentially, in essence, the discovery of Tchaikovsky. So Tchaikovsky really just observed this fact that they are all of epsilon invariant, and they verify wave equations, which again it's it's pretty much connected. Yeah. I'm, okay. Sorry, I apologize. All right. So I, I will have to go fast. So this is uh, uh, t these are the Tchaikovsky equation. Uh, so it's an equation for a in in uh, in a perturbed space time. You have error terms. Uh, and here is a transformation, Ch Chandra Seca transformation that allows you to go from this equation to something that looks more like a Reggie Wheeler equation. Now, if A is zero, which is the case of Schwarzschild, this is a little bit easier. Uh, by the way, the, the first transformation of this type was done by Dafermos Rodiansky uh, and Holzegel, Dafermos Holzegel and Rodiansky. Uh, in the case of Schwarzschild, where name is equal to zero, and in, th in that case you get exactly the Reggie Wheeler equation. Otherwise, it's, uh, it, it has these additional terms here, and we call it generalized Reggie Wheeler equation. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'll have to go very fast. Uh, uh, okay, so let's uh, strategy. Uh, let's talk very fast about the strategy. Expect to be able to treat A 
using uh, GRW. So, okay, so the point is that you look now at all possible components that you have of the perturbed metric. So uh, A and A bar are these extreme curvature components and they are essentially off epsilon in perturbation. So, uh, so you separate them from everything else by the fact that they verify this good equation that I, I mentioned earlier, this Tewkowski equation. With, uh, of course, you have error terms. So in that equation, you obviously have uh, error terms on the right-hand side. So uh, error terms depend on everything. But they are quadratic, so that makes it a little bit easier. In fact, these terms, you treat them sort of similarly uh, to the way they are treated in the stability of Minkowski space. You use a null condition and so on and so forth. Because normally, you will have instability. But uh, the structure of the, the Einstein equations allows you to really, uh, in principle, control those terms, provided, of course, that you know how to control every component, gamma hat. So you have to control these two components, and then you control the quadratic terms by the null condition. Uh, so uh, now the, the point is that uh, this A, A bar are quasi-invariant, because they are all epsilon square invariant. But the other quantities are not. They are all of epsilon. So they, they, now they, everything else depends on specific choice of coordinates or specific gauge choices. So uh, we set up a, a continuation argument based on a fam family finite of GCM admissible spacetime with specific bootstrap assumptions, which we recover at every stage. And maybe this is the last slide that I, should, I will be able to do in the next uh, two minutes. So uh, let me try to explain it. So, you see, you, you want to construct your space-time starting with initial conditions. It's not too difficult to show, so these are results of uh, Nicola and myself, uh, which are based on technology of stability of Minkowski space. It's not too difficult to show that if you start with a space-like hypersurface, you can go, you can construct the space-time all the way to uh, the, this, this kind of, so this is almost like a null hypersurface, it's not null, uh, in Schwarzschild, it will be exactly a null hypersurface, but this way it's time like really, but uh, it becomes asymptotically null. Uh, so, in principle, you can imagine that you have data set given to you in a layer, in a, in a boundary, in an initial data layer, which looks like this. So, I know the space time here, and it, it's, con it's constructed by techniques which are well known from the initial data. So, anyway, the data is given here. And uh, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the boundary layers, and I want to go, sorry, the boundary layer, you should think about it as being a small, smaller region like this. And uh, I extend my, my space-time region to something which looks like this, okay? And this is a, a finite, what I call a finite admissible space-time, uh, which I want by a continuity argument to go to infinity. So in particular, for example, this, space-like hypersurface here will become, will become uh, sky plus, okay? So everything will move towards the picture at infinity. Now, uh, in fact, maybe I can show the picture at infinity. Let's see if I have it. Yeah, so th this is the final, this is how is the final construction is going to look like, right? So th this is where you pushed everything uh, to sky plus and you have a, you, you have a, a sky plus which is, uh, which is complete. So, uh, uh, so uh, the, the, the point is, how do you construct such a space-time? So the, of fundamental importance, and that, that's the one that's connected with this coordinate that I've been talking about all the time, is this sigma star. So th this is the one that I mentioned will go all the way to sky plus. So this is uh, uh, where we impose a so-called GCM condition. So these are general covariant modulated uh, spheres or hypersurfaces. This is a hypersurface. But the hypersurface itself starts with this uh, star. Which is which is just a sphere, and the, the the at every stage in the in the continuity argument, of course, you have to push the space time further and further, and you have to reconstruct a surface a star and a hypersurface sigma star, and uh, th this uh, is maybe the most delicate part of the construction because because uh, uh, you, the the way you construct this a star is by imposing a, a certain number of conditions, which is, which is exactly connected to the numbers of degrees of freedom that you have in the Einstein equations. So that's where you use a full covariance of the Einstein equations in order to set these conditions uh, here. And then similar conditions, uh, there are additional conditions which are on sigma star, which I obviously I will not be able to talk about it. Once you have this constructed, 
Everything else is constructed by transport equation. So you transport equation this way, then you transport equation, you, you transport in the opposite direction going this way. Okay? And then uh, there will be a region here because these are, these are timeline hypersurface. There is a region here which is actually quite small and you can treat it by the local existence area. So, uh, uh, and the, the space time as you see is constantly being upgraded. So, uh, so the, and uh, also important is that the axis, mass, and angular momentum of the final space time is determined on a star. So you, it's in your choices of a star and coordinates of a star, you use a, a uniformization, which, which we call a uni effective uniformization, which is uniformization results for the sphere are usually not unique, but there are certain, there are certain ways of making that unique. That called, we, we call them effective uniformization conditions. And uh, they pick up co coordinates, they pick up the axis, uh, they, they pick up the angular momentum. I mean, you, you can define the angular momentum uh, and the mass. And then you transport everything like this, and then like this, and you define it everywhere else. But the important thing is that, uh, the, the most important thing is, of course, it's a star which you, you are constantly readjusting. So as a consequence, you are constantly readjust, readjusting also this notion of axis, uh, uh, of symmetry, the A and M, and so on and so forth. Right? So, uh, so this is the final result, uh, the initial data layer that I mentioned, which is here, uh, and you construct a space time which goes all the way. So as I said, the result is not entirely finished because there is this uh, remaining part, uh, which, so there is a very natural separation between the major part, which is already in our paper, and uh, a second part, which is just essentially on proving estimates for the Tilkovsky, this generalized Tilkovsky equation, so which we also think we have it, but uh, it's not yet published. So uh, with this, I'll stop. Other questions? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've seen you first. Again. Again. <laughs> so do you have an ex can you uh, obtain an expression for the final angular momentum, no. final mass in terms of the no, okay. no, 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 not. I mean, in principle, no, you you can't. I mean, everything is everything is everything is done by a continuity argument, and you're constantly readjusting everything, so it's very hard to trace it back. Can you have bounds or some estimate? Oh yeah, bounds. You certainly can. Yeah, bounds in terms of the perturbation. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And also, the, the other things that you, you know, you, the other things that you, some monotonicity things maybe, or the, the, there are some quali qualitative things that you can determine, but not a formula. Okay, yes. Your question. It's a more general question than the specific problem of general relativity. You show us with the example of the Pascal theory of phi that uh, linear stability is not sufficient to ensure non-linear stability, non -linear, yeah. uh, stability. But is it nevertheless necessary, or there is nothing? Uh, oh, yeah, well, yeah, linear stability, of course, is, a, is an important part. But uh, what you mean by linear stability depends on how, somehow what you want to prove at the end, right? So you, you, you have to have, to at least that's the way I think about it. You have to envision a certain type of proof and, and, and then somehow you linearize and in that, I mean, you, at least conceptually, you never, in our proof, we never linearize anything. We just conceptually, we do something which conceptually looks like a linearization, but we don't linearize anything. Now, I should say, for example, in answer to your question, stability of Minkowski space at the linear level is totally trivial, right? It's just a wave equation. And, and yet it took us about 550 pages to prove it. So it's a, it's a huge difference between linear and nonlinear. No, that, 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 that oh yeah, but you need you need or? yeah 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 you 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 definitely need linear stability. I, what I'm saying is that how you define there are many types of linearizations that you can do, right? And depending on you know some are maybe not as good as others. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm sure that as a physicist, some calculation idea may be a meaning. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, sure, you. I mean, definitely, you as a physicist, you should continue to do whatever you are doing because it's great that we have all these insights. And I think it's extremely important to have all these insights. But in, in the end, obviously, you know, there is more to this issue of passing from linear to nonlinear.
But if you have a linear instability, which is mild, like just power law, and if you add strongly nonlinear things that kill them when they become large, it will be... It will be okay, but uh, I don't know. Do you know an example of this? I mean, where you can actually have, you, you specifically have something which is growing, yes. a mode right. which is not bounded, but growing, and yet we prove... To, to do something like this. Ah, okay, good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's very interesting. Of course, bounded is okay, right? Mm -hmm. As we saw, you can have bounded modes and you are still okay. Uh, but growing modes, I don't know of any example yet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would say no. In principle, I would say that you don't have, unless there is something really miraculous happening. So, uh, if we go beyond the horizon, physicists believe that uh, the inner horizon will be replaced by the singularity and probably a space-like singularity. Does it even make sense to ask the question mathematically? Of yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, there are people who work on this, what happens beyond the horizon. So, th th for example, there is a, a very important work of uh, uh, Jonathan Luke and Daphermos uh, exactly on, on, on the issue of so you, you, you take uh, uh, the horizon of the Kerr solution, you make a perturbation of it. Right? Now the perturbation, obviously in principle, has to be connected with the perturbation from a space like hypersurface. But somehow if stability of, of the Kerr is done, then you, you think that you know what are the reasonable perturbation of the horizon that you can make. So you start up with those perturbations and you, you show that either you form a space like space like singularity in the future, or on the country, you, you, you stay null. And in fact, they show, at least in perturbation, uh, when you make this small perturbation of the, of, uh, of the care horizon, you, uh, you stay null. In other words, the singularities stay null. So the, there is a stability, in other words, of the Cauchy horizon. So, the so it's a called the... Well, right. They cannot prove that it, stay, it becomes singular, but, but it's, it, it stays there. In other words, it's stable, at least in, in, the, in the kind of perturbations that they, 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 they have on the, on the Cauchy horizon. But it, the belief now is that, uh, that uh, the Cauchy horizon is stable in perturbations starting from care. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> So for the initial data, uh, do you always consider like data on a space-like surface, or um, I mean, sometimes maybe a time like uh, work you around the source, something like that? Well, that's very ill-posed. I mean, from a mathematical point of view, uh, that's uh, no, no. Uh, it's very, very ill-posed. The Cauchy problem uh, outside. Uh, a scene in there is ill posed even for the wave equation, right? So if, you, if I just take the wave equation in, in Minkowski space and I, I set up initial conditions on, on, on the scene in there and I look outside, that probably is ill posed. No, I mean, uh, for example, a space like surface and then joining. Oh, with boundary conditions, you mean? Uh, with boundary conditions? Yeah, no, yeah, sure. I mean, there are. Boundary conditions, they look outside, right? And you also wa wonder about, yeah, I mean, you, you, you can certainly ask that, uh, ask that question. Yeah. yeah. But that's, uh, that's no, yeah, that's not the initial value problem, of course. I mean, you, you cannot put the initial value problem on a, on a, on a time-like surface. Okay, that's another question. Yes. Uh, my question is actually not so much I mean, only restricted to the rotating case. What can you say about uh, space times and dimensions different from four? Well, so the belief is that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so there, there is a lot of linear. Uh, there, 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 are stuff, there are many more solutions in, in higher dimensions, right? There is a Perry and I don't know the, uh, the ring solution. Anyway, I don't I don't uh, even remember. I, I never worked in higher dimensions, so I I, I I can just refer to the fact that there are linear stability results in that case. I, I, both, stab both stability and instability. So the, some of the things are unstable. Uh, I think a ring solution is unstable. Right. Minkowski space is shown to be stable in, in four in dimensions. And Minkowski space is, is in all dimensions. It's easier. The, the higher the dimensions, the easier it yeah, becomes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's much easier in higher dimensions. So f for some reason, 3 plus 1 is the, the critical one. 
So there's nothing that singles out four-dimensional Minkowski. Okay? Uh, the nothing that singles, singles out four dimensions. Four, four plus one, you mean? Three plus one. Dimension. Uh, three plus one, it's, it's singled out, right? No, I thought it was stable in there. Well, uh, it's singled out because it's, it's complicated, it's complicated <laughs> and you <laughs> stability, <laughs> and stability, sta uh, stability, I mean, we have no linear stability results of black holes. I mean, this is pr pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah. And in higher dimensions, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, is the careful? I get uh, yeah. So you can ask, of course, the same kind of question. If you have linear stability, then maybe you, you hope to have also nonlinear stability. Yeah, I presume that's true. Yes. I don't know if it's a question for you, but you mentioned that uh, you cannot fix the gauge from the beginning. You have to adapt it. Yes. Uh, then this be a problem also when you do numerical. Simulations of VR. It's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I think it's the, it's probably probably people do something like this, right? I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I guess you make a fine probably a finer number of adjustments in that case. Right. So you actually let it continuously evolving. Okay, all right. So then that's that's quite similar, but that's yeah. Okay. There, there is one. Excuse me. Just 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 one thing. So there, there is maybe one difference. So I, I guess you allow it to evolve starting from the initial data, right? Right, so here it's very, very important to think uh, that y you are coming from infinity. So you are always adjusting at the, at the last boundary, so to speak, right? So you're adjusting, in a sense, from infinity. So you change the data? <laughs> the, the good question. Uh, that's why we talk about this layer, right? So, uh, yeah, so the, you have to compare that it's... So you get new data coming from infinity, and you have to compare with the other. That's, okay. that's a tough part, in fact, actually. It's not easy. And uh, it can be relatively large deviations, in fact. Mm -hmm. So the, from the, your initial data and the one that you come from, uh, from infinity, uh, there is a large deviation, which presumably corresponds to, I don't know, something physical, right? There is a boost of the, the, the black hole. This is some kind of... Yeah. Alexandra. Yeah, so you said at some point that there was only a small part of the proof where you had to constrain to small speeds. Uh, yeah, there is. Easy to explain uh, where it comes from. It's because of the trapping. The trapping makes life very complicated in terms of getting estimates for the Tukolsky and the disgeneralized Reggie Wheeler equation. So, uh, so it's a technical, it's a technical issue, but of course it's an important technical issue at this stage. So people can, so you, you, th this was has been solved in linear theory. However, the issue has been solved in uh, this work that I mentioned by. Uh, Anderson. No, not uh, not Anderson. Anderson did still did for small a. No, th this was still Holzegger. Uh, I mean, the famous uh, Holzegger Rodniansky uh, and Ma. Uh, sorry, no, excuse me, and, and Jakob schlappentorf rotman I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of tired. Uh, Jakob schlappentorf rotman uh, they, they treat the case of this Tewkowski equation, so uh, the bounds for the Tewkowski, uh, decay and bounds for the uh, uh, Tewkowski equation in uh, uh, the full sub-extremal case. But they use very, very strongly the structure of the care solution. You know, so it's the fact that they, you are in care. So in perversion of care, it's, it, it, it's much more difficult. And we'll, we'll see how it... Yeah, I, 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 w I suspect that it will be done in the next five years, yes. There's an online question. <laughs> 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 There's a question online, which is something. Ah, there's a question online. Yep. But, uh, can you give it free? Well, I can try to read it or out. we can ask our administrator. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether we can ask the person to ask it, to unmute and ask it. Yes, so that what is, is one question. question. But maybe it's easier if I read it out. So the question is whether Minkowski space time is stable against the Sitter space time. I'm just reading, I can't give more information. But the question is by Shi Shang Chu Shi. 
Uh, but the, the, the theta space is, is, is really the case of non-zero cosmological constant, which I did not treat. It's not treated here at all, right? So it's a totally different story. Uh, <coughs> there are other results. There are many results. Hintz and Vasi have interesting, very beautiful results on, on that case. But that's, it's, it's easier, usually, when you have positive. Uh, so th this kind of stability problems are a lot easier if you have a positive cosmological constant. They become much harder if you have a negative cosmological constant. That's a different story. Well, it's unstable. Yeah, and then they're in some stable, right? Okay. Exactly. Then you have answered all questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.